Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're about two and a half minutes from starting. If you are on Zoom, now's the time to turn on your cameras. Visibility is accountability. We'll be starting in about two and a half minutes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the most powerful women in network marketing 2023. Please help me welcome to the stage the one and only Mr. Network Marketing Pro, Eric Worry. How's everybody doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Have a seat, have a seat. Now listen, why in the world is this white bald man coming out here in the, at the beginning of the most powerful women in network marketing? Basically, um, I get to host a bit. I'm actually going to have a co-host I'll introduce you to in just a little while. But um, in, in, to allow Marina and all this cast of amazing women get to share their ideas, their strategies, their insights, their secrets, their wisdom over the course of these three days. I'm going to try and kind of uh, help it move along and get out of the way. You know, a smart man learns how to get out of the way of a strong woman, right? <laughs> so... And if you excuse my voice, we've been going real hard over the last week or so. So I'm very, very white over the course of this, um, the last uh, couple days at least. So uh, I'll, I'll be drinking my tea with honey in the back and coming out and keeping things moving. But let me tell you what this morning looks like, okay? This morning, we're going to talk about the value and the power of network marketing for women and why it's such an incredible gift, not only for you, but for the people that you uh, come into contact with, people that are looking for solutions, the people who are 
uh, trying to find a better way. And so many, 77% of, of participants inside of network marketing are women. And it fits in their lifestyle. It fits with their, their energy. It fits with their heart. It fits in so many different ways. And you're going to hear about that this morning. And what we decided to do is we decided to stream the first, this first morning for free around the world. So I want to encourage, <clears throat> yes, I want to encourage all of you to go on to, you know, depending on where you're watching from home, and it's great to see you all, um, is to go to either Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. You know, if you look under the big um, Eric Worre on Instagram, Eric Worre uh, main page on Facebook or the YouTube channel and share that with a prospect, share that with somebody who's thinking about getting involved in network marketing, share that with somebody who would be blessed if they really truly understood the value of what's offered inside of our profession. So what we'd love to do is have a million people watching over the course of the next three hours. And we'd love to help those people make a decision. Okay. Uh, that would change their lives and then help teach them over the next three days how they can take that opportunity and impact even more people. Okay? So I highly encourage you to do that. I'll remind you a few times over the course of this morning. But at about 12, 10 p.m. Pacific time, then we're going to turn that off and the rest of the weekend will be kind of privately done for all the people who've registered around the world. Over 100,000 people registered and are attending this event around the world. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. Pretty amazing. So with no further ado, I want to get this started. There's so many powerful women, but the one to start this off is the most powerful woman in my life. This woman um, who I met uh, almost 15 years ago, luckily for me. And she's she's done so many things. Nine years ago, she decided to start this, this event, The Most Powerful Women in Network Marketing. This is our ninth year, her ninth year in hosting this event. And you take not only that, but what she does to run Network Marketing Pro, and then also this studio, a one in the world creation. She built it from the ground up. She built it in 70 days. Nobody can believe it. Um, this is patented. It's kind of, we, we own the design. We own everything all over the world. Uh, and major brands, not only what we use this for, but major brands around the world use this in order to be able to reach more people. That was our vision together, but her implementation, because sometimes vision's great, but somebody's got to go do it. An idea is fantastic, but somebody's got to go solve all the problems. It's just, yeah, I want to go change the world, but yeah, okay, now, what are we going to do in order to be able to make that happen? What kind of a team do we have to put together in order to be able to make that happen? So uh, this woman is a serious badass. She's the most powerful woman in my life. Please give it up for Marina Flory. watching us like you heard Eric said we actually have 107,000 people who registered for this event and you know every time I do these things I'm just like so blown away because you know first of all 107,000 trusted me with this amazing opportunity and spent three days of their life plugging in taking notes and elevating their lives so 
like Eric said, uh, I'm the CEO of our companies and um, I get to run the largest training organization in the world for this amazing profession. And it just constantly, every time it just blows my mind. So first of all, I wanna uh, invite all of you who are watching from home, you heard Eric say that we're gonna be streaming to different platforms, millions of people gonna be watching. And before I go and talk about our entire profession, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview, <coughs> excuse me, what this event is gonna be about. So for the next three days, you're gonna hear from a lot of amazing network marketing rock stars who will be teaching on network marketing skills, different strategies that are working today. Because one of my goals is not just to kind of like give you all exciting information, do a little rah-rah, a little dancing, but I want to give you the tools. I want to give you the skills necessary. So when you go back home on Monday, you have a full journal of notes. You have the information, a roadmap that you can go and take your business to the next level. So you can grow it and you can change your life. That's what you want. <clears throat> of course, uh, this event is going to be special in so many different ways because my dear friend Lisa Nichols will be co-hosting this event together with me. And I'm super excited about that because first of all, she is a total rock star. She, I'm still kind of like pinching myself that she, I can call the Lisa Nichols my friend, my girlfriend that I get to vacation and get to spend time with. So Lisa graciously agreed because we were actually on one of our vacations together and I was telling her about this event that she spoke already before. And I said, Lisa, you know, you have such an amazing talent. And those of you who never heard Lisa speak, first of all, I don't know if you live on the moon or something, but <clears throat> Lisa has that unique ability. She can get into your soul, crack it open, packed with a lot of goodies, with a lot of love, with a lot of hope, with a lot of dream, and then put it back in there. And I was like, Lisa, can you teach me? I really want to know how you do this. Teach me how to be a better speaker. Teach me how to tell the story in a powerful way. Because I do believe that inside of network marketing, storytelling plays a huge role. Because that's what we do with our prospects. That's what we do with our teams. That's how we lead our organizations. Because when you start with your prospects, nobody really cares about the data. Nobody cares about the numbers and ingredients in your products or all the specificities of your service. Nobody really cares about that. What people do care is the story. What, what people do care, how that impacted your life. What it changed. What changed? Where were you before and where are you now? And where are you looking to go, right? So the storytelling plays such a huge role because at the end of the day, that's what we do, right? We help blind people see with our stories, with our ability to help them to open up their imagination and maybe have that glimpse of hope that they can do this too. Maybe they can change their life as well, just like you did. And of course, when you start building organization, when you become a leader and you have a lot of people to lead, that's how we lead, right? Through the storytelling, through the... <clears throat> information that you know you heard somebody else tell how that impacted their life and of course once you get a chance to speak at your company convention or event like this on stage our ability to communicate in a, such a powerful way through stories that impact that create a long-lasting change so stories is such a huge part of our business and i said lisa can you help me and teach my community the best storytelling techniques. So she agreed to do that, and I'm super excited for all of you guys to spend the next three days with my dear friend. <clears throat> so let's go back to network marketing. And like I said, today, uh, this event, first of all, it's our ninth year doing this event, and through the last nine years, we were able to impact almost half a million women. This is crazy to me. <clears throat> Thank you, because with uh, 100 plus thousand watching right now and uh, almost 200,000 we had a couple of years ago and throughout these nine years, it's a huge amount of women. And I'm really proud of that because, you know, the ability to hear their stories, you know, you will hear from Marina Simone a little bit later today. And 
she was a single mom and she was uh, struggling in her life, raising a child. And at that time, her car got repossessed. So she was trying to get that car back. And she was stuck in the cubicle, not being able to even see the first steps of her firstborn. And today, Marina is one of the top 12 in her company. She has a huge organization around the world. And hearing stories like that is so fascinating. The change that happened in somebody's life. Sarah Zalaki, you will hear from her later as well. And Sarah also started her journey as a nanny. There is nothing wrong with being a nanny, and Sarah absolutely loved that. But in that journey, there was not much room for Sarah. There was, she was raising somebody else's child, living in somebody else's home, driving somebody else's car. There was no room in that life for Sarah. And she wanted something more. She wanted, she had her dreams, she had her hopes. And when she joined network marketing for the first three years, <clears throat> she could not recruit her first single distributor and the tenacity and the discipline and the consistency of that woman is just mind-boggling it took her another five years to get to the six-figure income and today sarah and tony you probably most of you know who they are they're top income earners in the entire profession they have over 1.6 million customers worldwide so their success is huge but it takes time right <clears throat> It takes the belief, it takes that vision to go to the next level through the naysayers, through the people who are laughing in your face and calling you crazy and telling you cannot achieve certain things because you are a woman, because you're just a girl. And when I started my journey as an entrepreneur, I've been doing, uh, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I started my first business when I was 18 years old. And, you know, at that time, my hope was to build something for moms because oh, I knew how the motherhood can be overwhelming. And I wanted to give the moms everything that they need in one place so they can have the toys, the clothes, the food, everything. Everything from like a little um, the milk bottle, diapers to your first baby's lobby. Because I was about to become a mom myself and I can feel how crazy overwhelming and stressful it can be so that was my dream right to help a lot of women just like myself and i did not know what i signed up for because opening that store it was not just it yeah i realized that entrepreneurship is requiring so much more Immediately, I became my own accountant, I became my own legal advisor, I became my salesperson, I became a marketing team of one, and I even became a cleaning lady. So I was doing it all. I was taking all the risks, and I was the last person to get paid. I was the first person to come in, turn on the lights, and I was the last person to leave the store. There were times when I was 36 hours straight in the store because I was getting the merchandise, putting it on the shelves. I was working on the floor as a salesperson because I loved it. I was so excited. Let me show you all this cool stuff. Let me show you what you can have for your baby. It was so exciting, but I did not realize how hard it was. I did not realize that the entrepreneurship, it's not that simple. It sounds sexy at the parties, right? When you say, hey, I'm an entrepreneur. What are you doing for a living? It, yes, but when you actually realize all the challenges that come with that, and when I see a lot of people coming into the business world, coming into the entrepreneurship with an idea to open a restaurant or open a bakery or a little cafe, dry cleaning salon, whatever it might be, right? They have big goals, big eyes, big hopes, but they're not necessarily realizing what it takes to do this business, that it's going to take much longer, that it's going to take much more money. I spent half a million dollars I invested into my business. Majority of people, especially in the United States, it takes about $60,000 on average to start your entrepreneurial journey. And we're talking about something very, very small. We're not talking about building big empires. And when people come with that, most of the time, they do not have the money. They do not have that ability. What they do? They either borrow the money from friends and family or they mortgage their home. And what happens at the end of the day? How many of you know how many businesses fail the first year? 
20% of all businesses are going to disappear in the first year. That means that two people out of the 10 are going to lose their business. They're not going to make it. It doesn't mean that the other eight are crushing it. It does not mean that they're all profitable. Most of the time, they're all barely hanging and trying to survive that first year. By the year five, 50% of businesses will be gone. I was one of those statistics with my store. It was awesome for the first five years, and then it went down to the drain. So I lost it all. All of my assets, all of my business, all of my financial freedom and independence. And I remember when I joined my first network marketing opportunity, I was 21 years old. And I was so excited because, you know, it was a breath of fresh air. Those people were actually, you know, excited to help me because when I was doing my own business, Nobody wanted to help me. I was not surrounded by, you know, cheerleading entrepreneurs telling me, like, you go, girl, here's this advice. Do this. Don't do that. Nobody was telling me that because everybody wanted me to fail. Because if my store, my business was doing well, if my customer base grew, that means that the store, door, uh, store next door, that means that they were losing customers. That means that their business was not growing. So they were actually praying for me to fail because that means that they would win. And when I joined the first company, I was like, what? You actually excited for my success? You actually want to help me? I was like, who are you people? Where were you hiding before? I was so excited just because of the community, just because of that feeling of camaraderie and people having a bigger vision and bigger goals. And I was so inspired by that. And then things changed in my life. So I was not doing network marketing for a season because my family, my kids, and my uh, generic business needed me a little bit more at that time. And I kind of like forgot about it. And then in my mid-30s, when I lost it all, when I became a single mom, I was kind of like trying to get back on my feet. And I was talking to different entrepreneurs, my friends who are more successful. And I said, guys, like, tell me, what, what can I do? Because like, do you have some business opportunity? Because I, I, I'm not employable. I realized that I'm not employable when I was about 14 years old. Yeah, I went to my first um, internship and I was like, no, nah, that, that thing does not work for me. So I need to find something else. So I knew that I do not necessarily look, I'm not necessarily looking for a job. I'm looking for a business opportunity. And I told my friends, so here's the deal. I want to make a lot of money. And because I want to take care of my kids, I want to give them the best education possible, an amazing life. Uh, I want to have some time for freedom because I have two little babies. So I need to be able to take them to school, take them to kindergarten, practices, music lessons, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I also want to travel. I love to travel. By the way, I don't have any money to invest, but I do want to have a lot, make a lot of money. And they were looking at me and like, are you crazy? Like this thing does not exist. What are you talking about? You either need to have a lot of money to invest so you can make some money or something got to change. Something does not work in your request. And it took me a while to realize that I was talking about network marketing. So when it finally dawned on me, I joined my second network marketing company. And that's when finally things started falling into place. And I started rebuilding myself. And Eric mentioned that we were building this studio. And today, my husband and I, we enjoy amazing lifestyle. We have amazing opportunity. We make a lot of money. But guess what? We make mistakes too. And guess what? My mistakes today are very expensive. There are six, seven, and sometimes eight-figure mistakes. When we started building this studio, it was a great idea. It was insane timeline. And I was told that it's like, hey, it's going to take probably, I mean, it's like you can do it in three months, which was nuts. I would not recommend it. They told me, it's like, yeah, you probably need like about three to $5 million to build this studio, 20 million later, and 5 million more in the last couple of years that we continue to invest into this business, continue to invest into the studio. And I'll tell you a little bit more about this whole journey tomorrow. 
but it was crazy. It was tough. I was so over my head. I was so kind of like fish out of the water. I had to lead amazing tech savvy men and I have no clue in tech. And I'm like the worst person you can find to do this. And I had to tell them what to do. Are you kidding me? So I ended up still building the studio and we are still in that five year mark, right? That we're trying not to become that uh, statistic. And I don't think anything bad gonna happen with this business. I actually pretty convinced that we're gonna be at top of Fortune 100 very, very quickly because we're already collaborating with huge brands. But here's the thing, this is a success story that you hear. This is a success story that a lot of people love to brag about it, but nobody tells you about the failures. Nobody tells you really from a big microphone, it's like, hey, let me tell you about my seven figure mistake. Let me tell you about my eight figure mistake. How many people want to hear that story? I mean, it's scary. Not that many people really want to tell that story and not that many people really want to hear that story. That's why when I got back to network marketing, I was so fascinated with this opportunity. And I know we have a lot of distributors, a lot of people who are already in network marketing, but we also have a lot of people who are just looking into this opportunity from outside in. And for all of you who are still thinking about or considering, because I know a lot of leaders invited their prospects uh, into this event. So I don't know if you're just like me, I love numbers because numbers don't lie. I'm going to tell you a lot of stories, but I also want to show you some numbers because numbers are the evidence. Numbers are what differentiates the truth from the like story and whatever wannabes are happening. So network marketing as a profession in 2021, and the reason why I'm giving you the stats of 2021, because the fresh stats always come out at the end of May. So we're going to have them in a couple of weeks. So this is the latest data that you can see. In the United States alone, we generated for almost $43 billion in retail sales. There are almost 45 million customers in the United States alone. There is 7.3 million distributors, network marketers, um, we call them in a lot of different ways, ambassadors, members, associates, whatever. But there is 7.3 million of people who choose that business as a profession. There is half a million of full-time people. And just for the clarity, full-time is when you work more than 30 hours a week. And part-time, 6.8 million people who utilize this business as in a supplemental income is something that they do on the side. And I know we have a lot of countries represented here uh, from Europe, from Australia, from uh, South Africa and Latin America, pretty much the entire world is represented. And if you look, if you look at the global stats, this profession generated 186 billion in revenue. And there's over 128 million participants. So I want to go back to the number 186 billion. I wanted to sink in a little bit <clears throat> because I mean, when we're talking about like huge figures, it's really hard to kind of like wrap our brain around. It's like, what does it mean? I mean, it's like a bunch of bees. It's a bunch of numbers. Like, I don't understand. So if you take a look at film industry that generates 77 billion, Music industry, 26 billion. National Football League, 18 billion. Basketball League, 9.8. National uh, Baseball, then basketball, 9.5 billion. Soccer or uh, football in Europe, <laughs> in, the, in the United States, we call it soccer, 5.8 billion. National Hockey League, 4.9. And Formula One, we're going to be hosting a next race of Formula One here in Las Vegas. So that's why I threw them in. All of those industries, all of those major sports that I just mentioned, plus movies and music, less than 154 billion. Remember the number of network marketing? 186. The reason, <clears throat> yes, yes, give yourself a round of applause because. I want everybody to understand the number that we're working with. 
I want you to be proud of the profession that you work in. I want you to be proud that what we have is an entrepreneurial journey. And like I said, I'm an entrepreneur to my core. I'm an entrepreneur to my bones. But when I see a lot of people coming into the entrepreneurial journey and with big hopes, big dreams, not necessarily realizing the challenges that are going to come with that, I want to tell them, like, guys, there is a better way. There is a better way where you can be the entrepreneur, when you can be the boss, when you can create your time freedom, when you can have an amazing community and do and be a mom and do business and be a wife and do everything that you want in life, there is a better way. And it's called network marketing. If we look at the top 10 countries that are leading the charts inside of our profession and generating 78% of the global sales. United States is number one with almost $43 billion. Korea is at 19 billion. Germany, almost 19 billion. China, almost 18 billion. Japan, Malaysia, Brazil, Mexico, France, and Taiwan. These are the top 10 countries in the world that, that are generating the highest sales. But more than all of those numbers, what I wanted to talk to you about is why network marketing is such an amazing opportunity. First of all is, of course, it's the low risk of business ownership. Remember, I told you I invested half a million dollars into my store business. There is not a single company in network marketing that you need to invest half a million dollars. There is not a single company that you need to invest even half of that. And when you start looking at how network marketing compares with a lot of other entrepreneurial ventures, this is a very cool graphic that I found very fascinating. Because inside of network marketing, what we have, of course, you're going to get your product or your service, you pay for it. Most of the companies actually have the buyback policy that you can get those uh, money refunded if you do not like the product because they stand behind the quality of them. And in a lot of cases, it may cost you maybe a hundred bucks or less to become a business associate with the company. So that means that you can start your own business with hundred dollars or less. Think about that. It's the amount of money that you're going to spend if you take your family to the movie night. Between the popcorn tickets and all this nonsense and giant Coca-Colas, <clears throat> you're going to spend that much money. And I think this is one of the challenges that we have as a profession. Because of price of entry is so low, guess what? People don't treat it seriously. People do not think that there is a value in this. Even this event is free. And some people are thinking, it's like, yeah, you know, it's not going to be that big of a deal. If it was some value in there, they would probably charge me money and maybe a lot of money. And that would be also justifiable. But just because something is free, it does not mean it has no value. Just because it does not require you to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into the business opportunity, it's not a serious business opportunity. Because if you look at being a realist, realtor, <clears throat> a lot of people talk about the real estate, it's a great investment, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, way to generate some income. Yes, it is an amazing uh, way to become an entrepreneur, to test your entrepreneurial muscle and become a realtor. But first of all, there are a lot of expenses that come with it. You need to go through the training, get the materials, get your licensing, whatever the, the, the state fees, whatever is happening, right? It can cost you anywhere between $500 to $1,000 to become a realtor. But you know what's interesting? The statistics that nobody really talks about it is 93% of all the realtors never sell a single home. <clears throat> so should we consider a realtors or that that entire industry a pyramid scheme? Because to me, the success ratio there is very, very low. I would not even talk about it. I would not necessarily want to be a <clears throat> one, one unit of 7% chance. And of course, we all kind of like start hearing about different gig economies, driving, the becoming an Uber driver or renting your cars. That's, that's another opportunity, but you have to either drive your car yourself 
or you have to buy a lot of cars so other people can drive. And there is a cost associated with that because first of all, you have to have the money to buy a car. <clears throat> and it can be anywhere from 20 to 40,000 based on these numbers, but we know it's it can get very expensive very quickly if you're trying to get a bigger SUV or newer car. And of course, there are a lot of other expenses that are associated with that. The maintenance of the car, the gas fees, the insurances, and all that kind of stuff. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, you have that have an investment, no refund, nobody gonna guarantee you that it's gonna work. You just have to write a check and hope it works. Same thing happens with the home rental. You need to have a lot of money to buy that home first. Yes, you can rent it. Yes, you can throw it on the Airbnb and whatever, but you have to have that initial investment minimum of about 300,000 to buy that house. You can do it later when you have a lot of money and become an investor, but if that's what you're starting with, that's a tough gig. Because again, between all the expenses, the maintenance and some of the tenants being messy that you'll have to repaint the whole thing, you know, it's going to get wild and quickly out of the hand. And franchise, buying a restaurant business, buying the franchise on your Starbucks, on your <clears throat> Subway and whatever. Again, we're talking about an investment of anywhere from $100,000 to a million bucks with all the different expenses that come along with that. And again, nobody's going to guarantee you that this business is going to be successful. Honestly, I wish inside of our profession, the price of entry would have been higher. This way, people would consider it more seriously. This way, people would say, because when somebody comes and tells you, boo, and you invest at hundred bucks, when somebody comes and tells you, no, you're crazy, what are you doing is nonsense, and what are you doing is not going to work, and it's laughable, and what, how is that thing, a little thing going on, whatever, right? So when people tell you that, and all of your investment is just hundred dollars, it's so much easier to kind of like start scratching your head. It's like, what am I doing here? Do I need to go through all this humiliation and all this nonsense? No, I don't. Forget about the hundred bucks. Get me out of here. And I'm going to go back into my cubicle. Or I'm going to go back and be a slave of the matrix. So when you invest significant amount of money, when I invested my amount of money into my business, all the naysayers, I was just like, okay, you know, I guess it sucks to be me, but I get to get going. I need to keep pushing. I need to figure out. I need to find a solution to be successful. I need to find a way to make this work. So understanding that what we have is so special. It's so powerful. So, and you can see, I, I identified just the core reasons that, are, in my opinion, are the big uh, reasons why this profession stands out so strongly around everything else. And I'm sure there are a lot more, but I just want to go around the core ones. So all the heavy lifting is done by your companies. When I told you that I had to become my legal, I had to become my marketing, I had to become my sales, I had to become all of my logistics and everything. That's what companies do for you. It does not mean that you don't have to do anything. We need to bring our excitement. We need to bring our passion. We need to bring our work ethic. We need to bring our leadership so we can grow those organizations. But majority of the hard work is done by the companies. Most of the logistics are taking care of it for you. I wish I had that when I started my own business. I wish somebody would take care of all the different distractions that I had to do. And all I had to do is to spend time with those moms and pour into them and talk about their babies and help them to find the motherhood a little bit easier, a little bit less stressful. That's what I wanted to do. And inside of our profession, we have amazing trainer because training, the companies provide great training. The leaders provide the great training. Uh, again, when I was building the business, Nobody was giving me the best strategies, best tips, and do this and don't do that. <clears throat> Nobody was interested in my success. My competition was interested in my failure. Inside of network marketing, we have the opportunity to make as much or as little money as you want. And of course, <clears throat> we're not going to throw any financial claims here, but 
It all depends on your work ethic, on your desire, on your ambition, on your skill set, how you want to change your life. And there is nothing wrong with making $100, $200 of additional income if that's what you want. If you have a small amount of time and you want to do it on your lunch breaks in between your job or taking care of your children or doing whatever you're doing, you can still do that. And if you have a bigger hopes, if you have a bigger dreams, you can go full out. You can take this business serious as the financial opportunity, as a profession treated like you would invest half a million dollars into it. You can generate a lot of money. Of course, it's going to take time. Of course, it's going to take effort because nothing grows. You cannot build an empire on a sand foundation. It's going to take time to build that base, to build that foundation, something that would, will last long. But that's what's required. We're not growing magic beans in this business. It's a business opportunity. So we need to understand that our profession abides by the same financial laws. You bring the value to the marketplace, market is going to reward you. But we have so many things like leverage that other professions cannot even touch. Because guess what? When I was selling those diapers and milk bottles and all kinds of stuff, I sold it once and that was it. I got my commission once and I had to do it again and I had to do it again and I had to do it again. Inside of this business, we have the opportunity to build a team and take a small piece of their productivity. And as leaders, that's what we do. We pour into our teams. We help them grow. We help and educate them, give them better skill set, give them better mindset so our teams can grow and be successful. We're interested in our team's success because that's how we become successful. <clears throat> Great profession, I'm telling you. <laughs> and of course, the flexibility, you can build it on your terms. I see a lot of moms there. I see all of these women with all those kids kind of like running in the background. This is the opportunity when we have the ability to build this business with our kids on one hip, our husband on the other hip, and <laughs> building in a business empire. We can do that all. We can do it on our terms around our kids' schedule, around our family's schedule. And that kind of like when I was raising my kids, it was a big deal. It was a big deal because I wanted to see them grow. I wanted to spend time with them. I wanted to be at important moments in their life. And unfortunately, we don't have that opportunity when we stuck in the cubicle. And I hear sometimes moms say, I have a mom guilt because if I want to take this business seriously, if I want to build it to the next level, I need to travel. I need to support my teams. I need to spend a lot of time. Yes, you do. But guess what? How about the mom guilt when we are working from nine to five, we're coming exhausted, we are so tired, we do not necessarily want to spend time with our children because we still have to cook dinner, take care of the house, we still have to clean, we still have to do the dishes, we still have to do the laundry. We're so exhausted that oftentimes we bark in our children for no reason. That oftentimes we, I was like, just get me to bed. Just, I, I need some rest. I'm so overwhelmed. How about the mom guilt there? Because you're working your butt off and you do not have the freedom of spending time with your kids. How about mom guilt because you cannot give your children better education? We came from, a lot of us came from a tough upbringing and we're trying to give our kids a better future. But unfortunately, most of the times we can because we are barely scrambling by ourselves. So that time freedom is big. And that ability to be flexible and work around your family, to me, is life-changing. There is no special education that is required. You can come from college, degrees, MBAs, whatever. And like <clears throat> Danny Robinson lo loves to call it massive bank account. That's her MBA degree, right? Because she was able to create it with her, this amazing business. So it does not matter where you're coming from, your age, none of the special requirements, your gender, it does not matter. You can join this business, most of the companies require bare minimum 18 years old. 
that's fine. But then you can join this company if you're 70 or 80 and start building this business and start a new life and actually join the amazing community of people and do something special. So there is no restriction of any sort or any kind. And one of the biggest things for me, and I don't think we talk enough about it, but it's an equal pay for women and men. That's a big deal. If you ask me, <clears throat> it is. And put some fire in each other, guys, if you agree with that. Because here's the thing. If we're looking in our business in general, anywhere worldwide, women are getting paid anywhere from 40 cents to about 60, 65 cents on a dollar. That's about what we get. And it does not matter because at the end of the day, if you want to be a female lawyer, you're going to spend the same amount of years in college and you're going to spend the same amount of money in college. They're not going to charge you less because you're a woman. They're not going to give you less of a requirement to become a surgeon, to become a doctor. You're going to spend the same amount of time. You're going to spend the same amount of money and then you're going to get less paid. How fair is that? Inside of this opportunity, we do not have a different pay for women and a different pay for men. It's the same compensation plan for everybody. And it only requires you to build a business. It only requires you to perform. If you perform, that's what you're going to earn. If you don't perform, you're not going to earn. That's to me is the most fair opportunity and I never seen anything out there. So if you want to be a performer in this world, if you want to be an achiever in this world, this is the profession that will give you that opportunity with no big ceiling, with supportive community, with you becoming your own boss and flexibility and all these amazing characteristics that we just talked about. So why it is important to you? Why this is a women's event? Why am I calling this event the most powerful women on network marketing? <clears throat> because there are 77% of all the participants in the world who are women. 77%. Yes, give yourself an applause. <clears throat> because here's the thing. Remember I told you there is 128 million people involved in this amazing profession. Do the math real quick, or I'll do it for you. It's 98 million of women in this profession. And some of you probably who is looking from the outside in and still thinking about it, it's like, hey, I don't know, you know, maybe those women made a mistake. You know, maybe they saw something here, but it's not really there. And I would agree with you. Maybe, yeah, maybe 1,000 women made a mistake. Maybe 10,000 women made a mistake. Maybe 100,000 of us are crazy, but 98 million? I don't think so. I do not think so. 98 million of women said yes to this profession. They did it scared. They did it with uncertainty. They did it with, you know, all the different challenges and disbelief in themselves and disbelief in this profession. They did it with a lot of different circumstances, but 98 million of women realized that, you know what? I'm worth it. You know what? I'm deserving. You know what? I'm capable. 98 million women said yes to themselves. Because when you empower woman, when you give her the means, when you give her the freedom, when you give her security, when you give her financial freedom, we do change the world. We do make this world a better place. That's why to me, this event is a, such an important opportunity to spread the message of network marketing loud and clear to everybody around the world, to teach women the foundation, the mindset and the skills that are necessary to do it right, to do it in a professional way. And I, like I told you, evidence is everything. And there is evidence everywhere. 107,000 people watching us from around the globe. And I want to bring on stage one of my friends who will tell you her story, how this profession changed her life. Amber Wood, Come on up, my friend.
everybody uh, because you have a fascinating story. I remember when I met you, how many years ago? Was 10 years ago. So when I met you for the first time, uh, there was a red, red hair at that time, right? Or more of a yeah. fuchsia. So, and you told your story and I was fascinated by that. So tell everybody what happened when you came, what, what you had before and what happened when you joined network marketing. So I was a teenage mom. I was a high school dropout. I had my GED. I worked at the mall and I thought that was just kind of how my life was going to go. I never came from, I knew nobody who had money. <laughs> my family were pretty broke. I was born to teenage parents as well. Um, parents who were drug addicts. We lived in homeless shelters. We lived in our car. Um, I remember my dad lowering me down by my feet to get day old donuts from the dumpster actually at a gas station. Um, I just never, I never thought that I would amount to much. And then I said, why not? Why not me, right? And that's when I found network marketing. Now, I didn't even know it was a business. I just heard you can make your own hours, you can make your own, your own money, you can decide how much you work. And I'm like, this is perfect for me. I have a new baby, this is great. So I got started. I didn't have a whole lot of success because I didn't have the mindset. I didn't go to events like these. I didn't read books. I didn't have a mentor. Um, so I, I didn't do that good at first. And then I said, you know what? There's got to be, there's got to be a way to make this happen. If it's happening for other women, it can happen for me. So that's when I went to my very first event like this. And I sat way in the back. I was so negative, you guys. My mindset was so bad that I was just sitting there with my arms crossed. And I'm like, these people are crazy. They're crying. They're laughing. They're like, who are these people? And why are they so excited? And the person next to me, they said, you know, maybe you got to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And I said, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to listen. I'm going to implement. And I did. And when I went home, I realized everything in this profession is a skill. None of it's a talent. The sales, the sponsoring, the leading, the, the training, everything is a skill. And Eric taught me that all skills in network marketing can be mastered. So that's what I did. I became a student and I started going to every single event I could go to, listening to every single person on stage and doing what they did. And you guys, I want to tell you, I was sitting there in my rundown mobile home. Now there's nothing wrong with mobile homes. I've seen some beautiful ones. This one, not so much. I, it still had the orange shade carpet from the 60s. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I It was full of mold. And I remember, you know, walking to my makeshift office, which was in my laundry room, and falling through the floor because it was that bad. And I knew there had to be a better way. And I knew 90 days, Eric said, could change my life. And I went to the very first 90-day recruiting mastery that Eric and Marina hosted. You guys, I came out of that event and I made my first big check. Um, I got flown to my corporate office uh, to be presented with it. And since then, my whole life has changed. And I want to tell you, besides that part of my life and being able to make my own hours and to be able to be financially free with my children, this has been such a big blessing. Two years ago, I had my son, Jackson. And Jackson was born with a birth defect. He was actually born with his bladder outside of his body. And when the doctor took him out, they're like, oh, beautiful baby boy, but. You never want to hear that but. He was taken and he was flown to Children's Hospital immediately. Um, he had surgery immediately. And he was in the hospital for over a month. Because of my network marketing business, I didn't leave his side. I was able to be at the hospital with him. I was able to not worry about my bills, not worry about my mortgage being taken out, not worry about having to call my boss and say, hey, I have to extend this maternity leave a little bit. I didn't have to worry about any of that because I built this business. Jackson had very, very intense surgery. Um, he has many surgeries to come, but that first surgery bill, my out of pocket was $500,000. That would have crippled my family back before network marketing. So I am so grateful for this profession. I am so grateful I get to be a mom and I get to take care of my children and I get to be with them every second of their life and I don't have to worry about the bills because when I work this business, my business pays it. 
So I love it. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you. Appreciate you, my friend. So you'll hear several more stories. And I told you that, remember, this business is very diverse. It does not require any specific background. And we have a lot of people coming from a lot of different countries. So my next presenter, she actually does not speak English really well. So she will have a little bit of a help on stage. But uh, please help me welcome Angela and Chavar Rodriguez. Angela, come on up. No recuerdo el día, pero sí recuerdo el año. I don't 2017. remember the year, but I remember the. Uh, I don't remember the day, but I remember the year. Recuerdo que estaba en la habitación de mis ex suegros con mi hija de siete años. I remember that I was in the my ex in laws uh, guest room with my chi my daughter uh, seven year old. Llena de maletas alrededor y sin un peso en el bolsillo. Full of suitcases with a, a coin in my pocket. Y preguntándome, Ángela, ¿será que sí vale la pena todo lo que estás haciendo? And asking to myself, is it worth it everything that you are doing right now with this business and this uh, industry? Porque en ese momento mi mamá me había echado de la casa. Because at that moment in life, my mom kicked me out of the house because I was building this profession. Mis amigos me decían, ¿cómo es posible que una odontóloga esté trabajando en un negocio de venta de tarritos? And all my friends kept saying to me, how is possible that you as a dentist are selling little bottles to everyone? Y muchas personas criticándome y dándome la espalda. And everybody were criticizing me and giving back their back to me. Así como recuerdo ese momento, también recuerdo cuando tenía nueve años. As I remember that, um, I had that memory, I also remember what I was nine years old. Que por escasez en mi familia tomé la decisión de trabajar en la panadería de mis tíos empacando calados. Because we were very poor, so I took the decision when I was that age to start working in my uncle's bakery selling bread in the street. Y recuerdo que con mi primer sueldo compré un pollo asado para poder compartir con mi mamá y mis hermanos. And I remember with that, my first salary, I bought a, a, a boiled uh, chicken to share with my family uh, because we didn't have the food to eat. Hoy recuerdo esos dos momentos con agradecimiento y alegría. Today I remember those beautiful moments with gratitude and thankfulness. Porque me formaron para ser la mujer que soy el día de hoy. Because they formed me to be and become the women that I am today. Thank you. Y recuerdo un momento muy especial que era cuando me decían ¿Por qué estás en este tipo de negocios tan riesgoso? And I remember a specific moment with everybody were telling me, why are you in this riskful business when you are a dentist? Porque como era posible que una odontóloga estuviera allí y no atendiendo un paciente en su clínica? How is possible that a dentist is doing that stupid things instead of being in, an, in your office and attending uh, patients? Yo quiero decirles algo. And I want to tell you something today. La industria del network marketing es muy riesgosa. This profession is very riskful. Muy risky. riesgosa. Very, very risky. Acá corres muchos riesgos. You take a lot of risk in this profession. Corres el riesgo de que si eres madre puedas ver crecer a tus hijos de forma vertical y no horizontal. You take the risk if you're a mother that you can see your daughter grow up like I've been doing it. También corres el riesgo de impactar vidas a millones de personas. You also take the risk to impact people's life all over the world. Corres el riesgo de mejorar tus finanzas. You take the risk to improve your financial life pero corres el riesgo también de conocer el mundo y personas maravillosas alrededor de él. Also you take the risk to go around the world and meet beautiful people that they're going to become your friends. Ese es el riesgo que yo corrí. That was the risk that I took. Y hoy tengo una vida maravillosa gracias and, a la industria. And today I have a wonderful life thanks for this profession. Nosotras como mujeres tenemos un don con ayuda de los hombres. We as a, a human being and women we have a very beautiful gift y es el don de traer vida a este mundo, de crear vida desde nuestro vientre. Which is being able to have a baby and create a life from our womb. Pero la industria del network marketing. But this profession. 
tanto a mujeres como a hombres, like for men and a women, nos da un don. They give, this profession gives us a gift. Muy poderoso. Very, very powerful. Y es el don de transformar millones de vidas alrededor del mundo. That is the gift to transform millions of people's life around the world. Así que ti tú en este momento. So if you at this moment in life. Te estás preguntando como yo en esa habitación. Si that vale it, la pena. Are you asking yourself like I did in that room that day? Te digo sí, vale toda la pena. Is I, I'm telling you guys that it's very risky, but it's worth it. Porque vale la pena que tú cambies tu vida. Because it's worth it that you change your life. Y cambie y vale la pena que cambies millones de vidas alrededor. And it's worth it that you change the millions Así que si, of people's life. Si te están criticando. So if the people is, is criticizing si you. Si te están dando la espalda. If they are giving the back to si you. Si te dicen que estás en una estafa. If they tell you that it's a, a pyramid. O en una pirámide. Or whatever they are saying about this industry and profession. Eso te va a ayudar a formarte. That is what is helping you to form yourself. Y te va a ayudar a lugares que tú en este momento yes, no te has imaginado. It's going to take you to places that you can even imagine in your life. Hoy. Today, estoy cumpliendo un sueño. I'm fulfilling one dream. En esta tarima. In this place, in this stage. Al lado de la mamacita que me dio la vida. <coughs> close, well, close to the mamacita. My nickname is. En mi negocio. That gave me my life in this business, in this profession. Y me siento muy feliz. And I'm very happy. De poder estar aquí en esta tarima. To be in this stage. Humble. <laughs> Que para mí es la tarima más importante del network marketing. To me, this stage is the most important stage in network marketing. Contándoles un poquito de mi historia. Chain a little bit of my story. Y confirmándoles. And just confirm to you. Que lo que dice Eric Worre. That what Eric Worre and Marina said all the time. Es cierto. Is true. La industria del network marketing no puede ser perfecta, pero this sí es mucho mejor. This profession is not perfect pero sí es mejor. But it's better. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Stories like this warm up my heart because I'm coming from a third world country and I know Angela is coming from Latin America and I know, uh, same as Joanna, a lot of people in Latin America is not having uh, good opportunities or financial freedoms to do what they want to do in life. And Latinas, like I mentioned, uh, getting paid way less than even Caucasian women. So we already, as women, getting paid less, and Latinas are getting paid even more, uh, it, even much less. So you will hear from a lot of Latinas. You will hear from a lot of women from uh, third world countries because, like I said, these stories were my heart so much because seeing the women striving for their own greatness, stepping into their true potential and giving themselves and their families a better life. Because at the end of the day, women like Angela, women like Joanna, women like many, many more amazing speakers that you will hear from, they are changing not just their families, they're impacting the world, they're impacting their countries, they're impacting their continents. And to continue this conversation about our amazing profession, I want to invite the man himself, who was the first person to call this business a profession. I'm super proud of that because I think it's a big deal. Uh, whatever you call something, that's how people are gonna treat it. And for a long time, we were called a thing, a project, uh, industry, whatever. And he was the first person to call it a profession because once I heard for the first time, it's a profession. It clicked in my brain. That means that there are skills that need to be learned. That means that it takes a different mindset. That means that it's something more serious that I can get behind. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my husband, the godfather of network marketing, Eric Worre. So it, it inspires me when I hear stories about people succeeding in our profession. It's been great over the course of the last 35 years. I've learned a lot about what it is that we do. 
And I want to share, before I introduce you to a few more stories that I think might inspire you, uh, I want to give you some opinions as to why network marketing is as good as it is. Of course, we have a flexible situation, right, which makes it great for stay-at-home people. It makes it great for work from home or people who, who do this on the side as a side hustle. But a lot of things have flexibility. You can drive Uber and be flexible. You can you know, do some side hustle and be flexible. That's great. Flexibility is wonderful. Low price of entry. Other things have low price of entry. You can go hustle your way into something to be able to go make some money, right? Um, the no background required, all these different types of benefits that we typically list out. Flexible, no education, no background, low price of entry, right? Support is provided. All these different things are all fantastic and amazing. But I, I'd like you to think about two words when you think about what makes network marketing different. What makes it different are scale and leverage. Scale and leverage. So if you think about driving Uber, for example, if you're not driving, you're not earning. There's no leverage available. You can't build an army of other drivers. That's available for Uber. It's not available for you. There's only so many hours you can drive. You can't scale it. You know, what's the maximum you could do and still stay alive? 16 hours a day? That'd be about the maximum, right? Got to sleep, got to eat. So <clears throat> what network marketing provides that is so unique is not only do you have an equal opportunity, equal pay, not only do you have flexibility, not only do you have no background required, you can learn as you, as you grow and you, and you continue to develop yourself as a professional. All those things are available, yes, but you can get scale and you can get leverage. There's four things that we do inside of network marketing. One, we sell valuable products and services using word of mouth advertising, the most valuable and most powerful form of advertising in the world. It, it does, you could be thinking about a diet, but you see a friend that lost some weight, you're gonna ask them, what did you do? They're gonna tell you, and how many of you have ever tried whatever it is that they said? Show of hands, be honest. You might have heard it a thousand times, but word of mouth from a trusted source, it's the most valuable form of advertising in the world. And that's what we do. We use word of mouth advertising to share products and services that are valuable to other people that would benefit from those products, right? That by itself is not unique. You can do that with a lot of affiliate marketing. You can do that with a lot of different things. Second thing that we do, which starts to bring leverage and scale into the game is we build an ever expanding team of other people who are selling using word of mouth advertising. So now you've heard the cliche, you can get a hundred people and get a small percentage of their efforts versus a hundred percent of your own. Now it's scale. <clears throat> Imagine you can work 10 hours a week. That's all you got but you get 100 people on your team who each work 10 hours a week, what's 100 times 10? What is that? 1,000? I wasn't good at math. 1,000 hours a week that could be helping you to leverage your opportunity in your business. A lot of people doing a little bit versus you doing a lot. So that's the second thing you do. You build an ever-expanding team. And inside of network marketing, <clears throat> there's no limitations. Wherever your country, your company operates, anywhere in the world, you can network, reach someone, help them start, and help them benefit in a big way. You benefit in a smaller way, but you have scale now. When you're sleeping, someone else is working. 
and you benefit. Third thing that we do is we duplicate the process. Now you're really starting to turbocharge scale and leverage. Now you can teach other people how to be leaders, other people how to grow a team, other people how to expand their vision, other people how to develop their skills. And you start having entire teams that do not need you and are out building a career for themselves. Not only is that financially rewarding, but it's emotionally rewarding. There's a lot of leaders here in this room and around the world. How emotionally rewarding is it when you see someone step into their own business and find themselves inside of our profession, inside of your company? It's unbelievably rewarding. Now, duplication requires another set of skills. You can learn that, you're gonna learn that this weekend. And then the fourth thing we do inside of network marketing that makes us different is we increase the productivity of the teams that we build based upon the leader that we are. If you have two teams of 100 people equally qualified, one has a great leader, the other one has a poor leader. The team with the great leader is gonna be more productive, yes? And what does that leadership do? It increases your ability to scale, your ability to create leverage. As I look around this room, there's dozens of women here in this room that are making seven figures a year in network marketing. Seven figures a year with no employees, that's leverage and scale. With no office, with no inventory, no overhead. Maybe they have a little virtual assistant and they feel like they're splurging with their virtual assistant. Leverage and scale is what makes us special. The companies provide all kinds of support, but what makes us special is the ability to build something and be able to really flex, really create a lifestyle, really have it all. You all have that capabilities. So six figure earners in the room, seven figure earners in the room and around the world. How many of you are <clears throat> a six figure earner or above either wave your hand or put a, a, a number one into the chat. Let me see, let me see. Look around the wall. I see Deanna's waving her hand. I see Shirley, I see Rebecca. I see Cynthia and Bonnie and Patricia. Yurkis, Coretta, Tiana. Amazing, right? This is just a small representation, a very small representation of, of the 100,000 people around the world that are participating in this, right? It's so rewarding to be connected to those people in a small way. And what I want to plant in your mind is a few years from now, you have people looking at you and saying, thank you for believing in me seeing a vision in me, seeing that I could potentially do this and helping me find a way to create my own career, my own vision. It's one of the most rewarding things in the absolute world is to be a little piece of somebody else's success story. It's tremendous. So I wanna introduce you to a few more stories that I think are gonna inspire you. First one is a dear friend of mine, stumbled on Network Marketing 2010, juggled her business a, a, a alongside her job. Um, <clears throat> she, she was able to replace that income, become a full-time network marketing professional. And again, you see people from around, from around the world and that's why we wanted to introduce her to you. She's built a six and seven figure income inside of network marketing. Please welcome Melantina Marcus. <laughs> I 
I met network marketing more than, than 15 years ago. I met network marketing because I was seeking out some products. At that time, I was working as a corporate top manager and I had a successful career. So for me, a business in network marketing at that time was not an option. But 10 years ago, I was in a position where maybe many of you are now. Me and my husband were striving so hard, working so hard in our full-time jobs just to afford to buy our dream house. My husband, working, so, uh, more than, uh, working in two jobs just to fill this part and just to earn the money because we couldn't afford to pay it cash out, so we had to take a loan. I was earning good money in the corporate, but because I was in the Eastern Europe, of course, we were not paid as the Western countries. My colleagues from other countries were paid much more than me, even if I was doing the same job, even if I was doing maybe sometimes better than them performing. But this cannot happen in network marketing, because here we are all equal. Here in network marketing, doesn't matter where you are coming from. We are all paid the same. So we succeed to take out to buy our uh, dream house. We, of course, we took a loan, but we are not 100% happy because we are so worried about our jobs and what's going to happen if we lose our jobs, we are going to lose our house. And in the same time, I was not staying so much in, at home because I was traveling so much in business trips. Uh, many, many times I was maybe more than several weeks away from home, working so hard to pay for my debt. And I remember once being so tired, being so, so frustrated in a business trip, in a one month business trip in Hong Kong. After a hard week of customers' complaints, reports, audits, I was in the hotel, so, so happy for the weekend, looking, so much, looking for the weekend, and on Saturday morning, I was feeling, I was needed, needed so much to call my husband, to call my family, but because of the time zone, I couldn't. In Europe, it was still night. And I get out of the hotel, and I start to walk on the streets, and all I could see were people happy, happy families, happy couples, having breakfast together, having a coffee, going to shopping together. And I was walking and crying, walking and crying and thinking how I could do this to be successful in the business, but so unfulfilled in my personal life. And I, dis I knew that is not the good way. I knew that it's not a good path for me, but I didn't take any action. I said, okay, can be better, but still I didn't action in network marketing. Until one time when me and my husband, after two years, we were discussing about divorce because it was, it was obvious that not having time together we are not feeling like a family. We are still love each other, but we are not feeling like a family. So I decided that it's time to do something, to do something for me, to do something for my family. And in that time, I said yes to network marketing. If network marketing is better, yes, it's better. It ruled my life, it changed my life. It changed my life, my family life. And now me and my husband, we are together, a happy family, traveling together, working together, and inspired many thousand families to do the same. Thank you very much. What's that worth? To be able to have your family, to be able to enjoy your life. How many people out there how many know someone that is married and they're living two completely different lives raise your hands if you know somebody like that it's a tragic thing 
and they tend to grow apart and they t try to find things to to find in common with each other to be able to make that connection again. I'm not saying you have to work together, but I do think proximity matters, being able to have the freedom and have the choices. Some of you know, you know, hey, if I had to work with my significant other, I think I'd go insane. You know, I can't work with them 24 hours a day. I need a little space, you know, let me go do my thing. That's fine, but the ability to have choices the ability to have options, the ability to not be a slave to somebody else's dream and somebody else's agenda is a tremendous gift. And you have that because of the scale and the leverage that you can provide. You're not just trading time for money, okay? Another story is a very dear friend of mine. I'm gonna let her tell her story. Um, she, she's not only a, a dear friend, but uh, she also, her and her husband, helped train uh, Marina and myself uh, please welcome out here, Mandy Escalin. Come on, Mandy. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Eric and Marina, for this profession. And you know, life is a journey and it has seasons, right? Some seasons are challenging, and some are very rewarding. And maybe for you, like it was for me, there were some seasons that were so dark. As a single mom about 10 years ago, it was really hard. I had restarted my personal training business, and there were days that I was in such survival mode and I got up and it was like, I just got to get through today. I just got to get through today. And I felt lost and I had no purpose. And I didn't even have a vision except to get through that day. It was pure survival mode. And being that single mom of two and a personal trainer full time in the gym, there were even days that I picked the change out of the cup holder in my car and had to make a decision. Do I put gas in my car to get to work or do I give it to my kids to have lunch at school? And it was a really dark time and I kept thinking to myself, is this as good as it gets? Is this, is what, li is this what life is supposed to be like for the next 20, 30, 40 years, there's gotta be more. And I knew I felt that in my gut that there's, there's gotta be more. And as a full-time trainer, I also met my husband in the gym and he's sitting right here, such an amazing man. And both of us were working eight to 10 hours a day in the gym, training client after client. And my kids sometimes would sit in the corner or they'd be at daycare. And at night I would go home and my husband had a job at night in the service industry that he had one night off a month. Literally one night we got to be a family. He would come home at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. I had already wrote out all the meal plans for our clients. I had already got the kids fed to bed. He would come in and he would open the door while they were sleeping and kiss them. And then that was basically our life. And he would get up in the morning before they were ever awake. So I would get up and I would bring the kids to school and then go to work. And it was just this cycle. And maybe, maybe you're like me, like you're like, I just want more. I just want more. And for about five years, my husband and I, that was our life. <laughs> I'm so blessed to know Eric and Marina and introducing us to this profession because we were burnt out, broke, frustrated personal trainers. And we always had more month than we did money. Anybody else can relate to that? Drop a two in the chat. That's a really tough place to be. And I'm so grateful, not only for this industry, because when we did, did very reluctantly decide to do this on the side, and I had a lot of convincing to do with my husband, $500 a month was all that we wanted just an extra $500 a month, just so we could pay the bills. And we joined the industry and $500 a month, it was great, it took, the, it took the pressure off because we weren't able to take vacations, we weren't able to take time off, we wouldn't have any income whatsoever if we did that. 
And so 500 turned into a couple thousand dollars a month. And then we were able to retire my husband from his night job and become a family every single night. <laughs> and wait, it gets better. <laughs> so in this industry, sometimes you have to switch companies or, you know, really realize like, you know what, I'm ready for that next level. And so we did. And about three and a half years ago, we decided to make that move and talk about scary. We made not only the move to do that, but we also retired from personal training full time in the gym. So it was sink or swim, right? It was no option either way. We had to make this work. And we did. And we are so blessed that we were able to earn six figures in less than a year. And not only that, we were able to already to date help 12 of our team members hit that same milestone. That is what leverage is, right? That leverage and scaling, because as a trainer, we couldn't scale ourselves. We had no leverage, we had no time freedom. And now, as a result of this, let me just share with every ounce of love in my heart that my daughter goes to school in Spain and she's actually watching right now. So hi, Sarah Bear. And we've been able to travel to Spain twice. We've been able to take the time off of work and be present parents and enjoy that time with our kids because time is something that we don't get back. Time is something that we can never have enough of. And this industry, this profession has allowed that for us and our family. And if you're even thinking about that, let me just say like, time is the most precious gift that we have. But the thing that I learned the most, the thing that I found in this profession was me. I found me. I found my voice. I found my purpose. I found the impact that I knew that I could have, and I have a vision so big to take people with me, to take people with us, with our team, because this is about one hand down, one hand up, and rising together. This is about learning and growing, and I think it's personal growth with a paycheck. And now that I've found my voice, and maybe some people don't like that very much, but now that I found my voice, I'm not going to be quiet. And this is the ultimate fair grounds. You don't have to have my background in nutrition or exercise. You don't have to have a degree that's just a piece of paper in a frame on your wall. We all play exactly the same. We all have the ability to find something that we relate to that's duplicatable that has leverage, that can create the time freedom, and whatever you're interested in, find that passion. You know, maybe whatever industry you decide to go in, but find something that lights your soul and fuels your soul on fire, because that, there are opportunities everywhere around us. And I'm just gonna challenge you, if you've never tried it, there's always gonna be haters, there's always gonna be naysayers, but you gotta look and really find something in your soul, find that spark, and you're like, I know that I was meant for more than just waking up and going to work. I know that I'm meant for more than never seeing my kids or my spouse. Whatever that is for you, find that. Latch on to people, because me finding a community of people, a community that I never knew how bad I needed, a community that lifts each other up and supports you and holds your hand every step of the way. And that's what we get to do for our team. And this is what we get to do for the world because this industry is this profession. It's so beautiful. I never in my life thought I would be doing something in this profession, but now I could never picture myself not being here. And I'm so honored to be able to share that part because I know we have seasons, but you get to step into that next season of what's next for you. What do I want more in my life? And make that next season your spring and the most rewarding season that you can imagine because you 
you have something that you've never had. But first, you got to do something you've never done. So thank you so much. I will tell you something. I believe that uh, single moms are a special breed. Uh, they're just what they can do. I mean, I don't have any clue. I mean, guys are generally clueless anyway, but we have a difficult time helping our spouse when it comes to kids and the house and everything else. We have a difficult enough time with that, let alone working, kids, house, dealing with your personal mental capacity to cope. Uh, I'm just in awe. Of, of the single moms out there that are making it happen, figuring out a way. And I'm so glad that network marketing has become such a good vehicle for them to be able to have and have what they have and support the people who are important to them and give them the freedom to, you know, the, the sad thing is seeing a single mom get involved in the wrong relationship because it provides some security. That's the sad thing. Um, the great thing is the woman who's so strong in herself and her ability to earn, her ability to provide that she doesn't have to compromise when it comes to the relationships in her life. In, 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 in her life. Um, that's empowering for me. It's, it's very, very cool to be able to see. I've got one more story I want to be able to introduce you to. Uh, Joanna Gilbala moved from Columbia, United States. She has grown a huge business. She's the first Latin, Latina to reach one of the highest ranks in her company. She's built a business in more than 17 countries. So please give it up for Joanna Gil Bala. sound well that's me and that place that you see now is the place that I was standing three days after I came out of jail because I was falsely accused from my husband that was accusing me of being abused and when he was really the abuser on me and that place after coming of jail was the place that changed my life. Because in this exactly place, I had the experience of listening, a police talking to somebody and saying, I have a woman, Hispanic, with two children, homeless. And I remember listening to those words, homeless. I don't know for you, but to me it was too big. And I just remember closing my eyes, start crying and saying to God, God, I'm not homeless and I'm not in a jail. I don't know how I'm gonna come out of this, but I'm going from jail to a palace. So today, I don't know if you are in a jail because what happened is I did everything in my power to come out of that jail. That day, somebody gave me $100 to start my journey. That day, I decided to do what I call my life in 3D, decisions determine your destiny. I didn't know how. I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the money. I was in a country that was not mine. I had three months in this country. I didn't speak the language. I didn't have friends. I didn't have a family, but I knew that I had to take the decision. So today, I don't know what is your decision, the decision that you guys have to take. But I hope that with everything that you're seeing today, you can have the right decision. And when everything that you are listening, you can come out from your, your yell and go to your palace. And I wanna help you, the women to put back the crown again, the place that we are belonging. So, um, 
I did all my journey. You know, imagine everything that I had to go through. No money, no house, no places to live, no family, no nothing. However, I put back myself in jail in my own making because I started listening to everybody when they were saying, Johanna, you have to go back to school in this country. Because my ex-husband that was American, when I was coming of that place, he looked at me and he said, you are nothing in this country. You don't speak the language. You don't have family. You don't have friends. You're ugly. You have nothing in this country. And I told him and I said to everyone today, watch me. Watch me. And I teach all my, all my partners, it's like, watch me, women, watch me. So I did everything in my power. Maybe it was the wrong reason. <laughs> Maybe it was the wrong reason, but that reason took me to the places that I am now. So I took the wrong decision because I put myself back in jail. I went back to school. Like everybody told me, go back to school, get a degree. I got the degree in nursing school. I paid all the prices that you can even imagine going back to school without speaking English, learning, learning you know, going to biology classes. However, when I was coming, the day that I was getting the degree, I realized that I was in jail again, a different jail, a jail that I put myself on it. I yelled on my mindset because then I was again in the same place that I had before. I yelled financially because I was making $2,000 and that was enough for a mother of three children. I yelled in my health because I had a very big issue with everything that had happened. The doctor said that I had two years to live. You know, I had to have many things to battle. But you know what? Why I love this industry and this profession? Because this profession took me out of jail. This profession gave me the opportunity to come from jail, or they, they help you to come either from jail to jail, but getting what you need to do. It helped me to, to be where I am now. And what I love about this industry and this profession is no matter who you are and where are you, or if I was homeless or I was a professional or was a nurse, you can start wherever you are now. You know what, what is the only thing that you need? The only thing that you need is yourself and a big dream. And I knew how to dream. Because when I, had, I was in that place, the only thing that I had was a big God, three children, and a big dream. So the only thing that you need to have in this profession is a big dream. And when you do that, I create again my three Ds. Do you dream your dream, do you do, and design your destiny. The only thing that I knew that I had was a dream. I don't know how to build it, but you know, the beautiful thing about this industry is that you learn what you earn. I was learning. I didn't have to go back to school. I went to back to school for four years, killing myself, going, working in the afternoon until one o'clock, then going to nursing school in the morning. Here in three months, in three months, I was making three times what I was making as a nurse. In three months, I qualified to be the highest level in my company. In three months, I create my destiny just with a dream and doing what you're supposed to do. I, be, I was the first Latina being in the Million Dollar Club in the company. I've been, thank you. Uh, it gave me the, the freedom and flexibility. It gave me the opportunity. No limits, no caps. You know, when you're working, you, you can work eight hours, but you're never going to make more than your boss. Here you can. However, what this industry gave me is the fact that when I was going through the process, I promised to my children, maybe we don't have it now. We don't have the time because I have to work and do everything. But one day, we will. And I remember when I, I don't know if you're a grandmother, you are grandmothers. I remember my daughter was pregnant and I said, daughter, when you gonna be a mother, I'm gonna be with you. This industry, this profession gave me the flexibility. I took one month just to be with her, to stay, spend time with her. 
And you know what happened? My business grew. I doubled my income in that month. I doubled my income in my month. I don't know if you are daughters. I am. And my parents and my kids were the only ones who were with me in that process because they're always with you. And I told them, the day that I become different, I'm going to be with you. And I've been supporting my, my parents financially with everything, the car, the house, and everything. But last year, two years ago, my dad was diagnosed with cancer in the stage four. I was the only one in the family that was able to be with him. Because everybody, even they made good money, they didn't have the flexibility, neither the time to be with him. I was the only one who was able to step out of my business to be with him because this profession gave me the flexibility to be it and also the income to provide them for that situation. So I owe everything to this business. And the only thing that I love about this business is the opportunity to have a platform, a global platform, a global impact. You're going to have a lot of beautiful relationships. I won't ever, ever imagine being standing at those stairs that one day I will be traveling the world, visiting my business. I, I got a tattoo with a heart and a little plane. When I, God told me, that's your purpose. So I'm going to keep traveling the world, visiting my business. Now I have more business than before, not even 17. It's like 35. I speak English, I speak Portuguese now, and I open in, and I'm learning French to speak with the French organization. So this business for a homeless coming from jail is giving me everything. Two weeks ago, I was in Punta Cana with one of my best friends from Portugal that is one of my partners in this industry. And I remember very, coming very happy because they gave me global entry for the first time after asking so many years for it, because every time that I travel, they put me in a little room. It's been 70, 78 times that they've been putting me in the room. So I came very happy. And I said to my husband, oh my God, it's gonna be my first time in going through global entry. Well, it was not that good experience. As soon as I came in, he went through, they stopped me. They did the same questions again and they put me against the wall. That was two weeks ago. And they, I said, but what happened? I had global entry. And they said, no, but you have a record. I said, but that's a long time ago. I don't have even a ticket. And they still stopped me and put me in that place. I came out crying like a little baby. However, I came out knowing that was not the same place that I was. I was coming from a trip that I won. I was coming for a trip with my friends from all over the world. And maybe I'm going to have to be stopped for a little while. However, the life that I have is because of this profession. And I don't know if it's important for you, but to me, I found the love of my life in this industry too. I found because the same person that brought me to this industry it, it, the same thing in, introduced me to my husband. So I owe, besides God, my children, my parents, everything to this profession. I'm standing in here thanking Eric and, uh, and, and Marina the opportunity to be here. It was a dream for me. Being in here, a homeless, a woman from jail, to bring and give you the hope, saying, you know what? Even jail or jail, you can do it. And I don't, I don't want you to go through the process that I had to. I don't know if you are maybe standing in those stairs in your life, the stairs of jail, thinking what I'm doing. Am I having what I need? Do I have the options? How do you think? And Maybe are you taking the, the vacation that you want, going the places that you want, or maybe you are in jail in the work that, like I was as a nurse, even I love to be a nurse. I don't know where you are. However, 
this profession can change your life. And I want you to think a little bit and close your eyes. Where are you at this moment? Maybe today is the day that you need to take that decision. If you are new, all of you guys that you are new here for the first time, maybe listening to this for the first time, you can take the right decision in your life. I don't know if your life is worth the yell making that we do for ourselves. I don't know. But you know, that day and today, I chose freedom. And I hope that you choose freedom too. How many people got at least a little bit of inspiration over the course of the last little bit? Yes? The goal for all of this is to, make a re is, is to help you make a decision to go out there and change your life. Whatever that decision needs to be for you. Some of you have been really, really close to making a decision, and this is just tipping it over, you know? Some of you thought you made a decision, and you're like, ah, oh, I guess I really didn't. I'm gonna really go after it now, right? So I'm excited because uh, we're gonna take a, a very quick break here. When we come back, you're going to listen to Lisa Nichols and a bunch of other amazing speakers. They're gonna be coming uh, um, as soon as we come back from this break. It is, uh, we're gonna come back exactly at 11 a.m. Pacific time, which is about 17 minutes from right now. Okay, enjoy your break. We'll see you in a, in a few minutes. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat. Yeah, I was ruled out with the bail that on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was built down. All the odds were against me. So I picked up the page, and now I'm in the rage. Give me some space. I'm a movement, and I am losing. Gonna go, 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 go. Like a bullet, don't take no bullshit. You should know, no, no, no. I'm about to explode. Alright, so uh, those of you watching, because I think that's going to help you if, first of all, if you were just watching as um, from the outside in, looking in this profession, and consider it, maybe it's something for you. Uh, connect, first of all, with the person who invited you to this and explore this opportunity because I do believe network marketing is the best entrepreneurial option out there. You heard my story. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life, and network marketing truly gave me uh, an amazing opportunity to take my life, my business to the whole next level. So see if it's something for you. And if you're already part of network marketing, First of all, I want to congratulate you and uh, I want to congratulate you uh, because this is an amazing opportunity. It's a great choice. Uh, just understand it's business like any other business. It's going to take time. Hi. It's going to it's going to take effort in order for us to build something strong and solid we need to build a solid foundation so it's going to take you'll need to learn the skills you will need to get better you will need to explore and uh, change your mind that uh, mindset from the employee mentality into the entrepreneurial mentality so we're going to go on uh, on a quick break about 15 minutes or so see the countdown and uh, we will continue with a little bit more of the stream because i want you guys to see the glimpse of lisa nichols but make sure the reason why we're doing this is because we have so many people coming into the platform so we wanted to make sure if you have any technical challenges you have enough time to get into the system so if you have the link to this event go to your link register because we're gonna stop the stream uh in about 15 20 minutes uh after lisa starts so and i 
I can promise you, you would not want to miss the rest of this event. There are so many amazing speakers coming in. Lisa going to be doing a big training. Uh, she's training for about like five or six hours during these three days telling the storytelling techniques uh giving you the insights necessary how to be more impactful storyteller how to become a better speaker better presenter you would not want to miss on that trust me so make sure you get into the system make sure you get in our platform if you registered prior there is a link in your email box make sure you go to that link so you can continue to participate in the event and not just watch but also be an active participator because there are going to be some assignments we're going to put you in breakout rooms lisa going to give you some tasks to do and she will be asking for your feedback for your ahas so make sure that you play full out and like i said those of you who are not registered yet and for whatever reason did not sign up for this event i don't know you're crazy or something come on go get uh go get yourself registered go to network uh, mpw2023.com uh and get yourself registered mpw just like most powerful women 2023.com you will see in the comments below the link go get yourself registered and it's going to be the best investment you made not just in money but the best investment of your time because like i said the skills the strategies what's working today that will be shared uh from all different seven figure earners inside of our profession lisa and other thought leaders it's going to be life-changing information and i'll see you on the other side all right take care bye-bye it's getting closer to midnight I tried to get closer to you Drinking courage from my red cup now I will soon make a move Ooh, I can taste it The bittersweetness of taking a shot A risk we're taking If it's a shot of love Baby, I adore you Focus on breathing. My heart is getting a beat. Your lips against a red cup makes me lose my mind completely. Ooh, I can taste it. The bitter sweetness of taking a shot. A risk worth taking it. It's a shot of love.
So small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out, so Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at the beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at the beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Look at the beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Lay my troubles to rest Blow the smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out so Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at the beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at the beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Look at the beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes Try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town I'm gonna drive a faster car, nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me. Try not to 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have about 90 seconds left before we start. 90 seconds at home in Zoom. Now's the time to get back to your device. Get that last bit of hydration in you. Turn those cameras on. Visibility is accountability. We'll be back with you in about 90 seconds. Welcome back, welcome back. Please help me welcome to the stage the most powerful woman in network marketing, Marina Wari. putting in the chat where they're coming from USA, Arizona, Sierra Leone. Come on, put in the chat where are you guys connecting from. I'm actually very excited to see. I know we have so many different countries represented, but I want to see you see Morocco. I see Austin, Texas, Guatemala. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This next session, I'm super excited about the presenter who is going to come on this stage because uh, she became a dear, dear friend of mine, and my connection with her goes way back, way before she even knew that I existed. Uh, I think it was 2000, what, uh, six when uh, her movie Secret came out. How many of you watched the movie Secret? Put some comments in the chat if you guys watched movie Secret. So I watched that movie, and you know, it definitely expanded my mind. It helped me believe in myself a little bit more. It helped me to recognize that I am in charge of my life. I can move mountains. I can do things that I really want and believe, and I'm deserving. And I started following this woman from the far, having absolutely zero idea that one day she will know my name. And more than anything, one day she can become my dear friend. So when Lisa and I reconnected, three years ago when she came to speak at the first GoPro that we did virtually. And it was so funny. And she keeps telling that story that uh, I was trying to show her. It's like, oh, look at the wires. Look at this. Look at that. And she's like, who is this chick? This is just insane. So uh, Lisa and I immediately uh, had a connection. And then later on, uh, I learned that actually my mom knew Lisa as well. And my mom attended one of the Lisa's seminars in I think 2009 and by I don't know uh, some divine intervention Lisa picked my mom out of the entire audience and they had a moment and it was a moment in time when my mom and I did not have the best relationship 
Sorry, mom, if you're watching for sharing this story, but I think it's so powerful. So uh, Lisa was coaching my mom and just says like, tell your daughter, I mean, call your daughter, tell her that you love her. And she's probably going to start asking all the questions that uh, why are you calling her in the middle of the night? Are you sick or are you dying? What's going on? And, and that was exactly the case because I was already in the United States. My mom was living in Ukraine at the time. So she called me in the middle of the night just to tell me that she loves me. And I, of course, asked her, are you okay? Are you dying? What's going on? And she's like, no, everything is fine. I just want to tell you how much I love you. And, and at that time, I did not think much about it. So when Lisa came three years ago to the GoPro, and I said, I know, Lisa, you're busy. I know you have another speaking engagement next morning. But would you please come to my house? Uh, I want to cook for you. I want to make you a steak. I want to whatever you want to eat. Just come uh, with a couple of more uh, presenters, with a couple of more speakers, and just spend some time with us. So Lisa graciously agreed, and she comes to my house. And my mom at that time, she was really bummed. She could not come to the studio. And so here I am. Coming to my house, Whitley Cindy goes, my mom, you should see her face. She was like, what is going on? And my mom does not speak well English, so she starts kind of like talking really fast in Russian. And I was like, wait, 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 slow down, mom, what's happening? So she starts hugging Lisa, and she starts telling Lisa all the story. And she's like, Marina, translate, help me. And I'm starting translating the story that I had no idea about it. So my mom starts telling Lisa, Lisa, remember, I met you in 2009 in Kiev. You were doing an event and I was one of the people that you picked out of the thousands of people in the audience. And you and I had that moment. And I told you about my challenges with my daughter. And you told me to call that girl and tell her that I love her. That's the girl. And that was me. And I was just like, what just happened? And, it's like, and it started kind of like coming all pieces together, that phone call in the middle of the night that my mom called me. I did not know that she was at Lisa's event. And Lisa had no idea that the daughter that she told her to call to is me, that later we became, became great friends. So I do believe that this universe, this whatever you want to call, that divine moment happens for a reason. And sometimes people who you're looking up to when you're growing up, when you're just starting your journey as an entrepreneur, as a mom, as a woman, as whatever, it can change your life so dramatically. And oftentimes we cannot even imagine how dramatically our life can be changed. I would, if somebody would tell me that 10, 15, 20 years later, I would be a good friends with this woman and she would invite me to her wedding and I would be a small group of those very highly selected people who were honored to share that moment of love, to share that beautiful um, testimony of their relationship. I would never believe it. I would say that you guys are crazy. I mean, it's absolutely never going to happen. So first of all, I wanted to share with you, my dear friend, I wanted to share with you this powerful woman. The way she speaks, like I told you, she has such a unique gift. She takes your soul, takes it out of your body, fills up all with love and all the goodies, all the healing emotions and the power that she puts in you to take your life to the whole next level. So I'm super proud and super excited that Lisa said yes when I told her this crazy idea. How about instead of just coming for 30 minutes, 40 minutes keynote, how about you host this entire event with me? How about you speak for five, six hours over the next three days? And she said, yes, that's what this woman does. She says, yes, and then, like, what do you need? So that's what um, my friend Lisa Nichols is. And like I told you, inside of our profession, I do believe the storytelling is a big deal. Better we become at telling stories, stories that change, stories that create that transformation, stories that open up somebody's mind. That's what the power that we have in our hands. So if we learn this skill better, if we are able to communicate in the way that people can relate, in the way that the people can hear, I think it's gonna be super powerful. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you standing in uh, in the studio, I would like to, for you to get up in your feet. Those of you at home, show some love, show some appreciation, so, show some excitement to my amazing friend, your friend, Lisa Nichols. you guys.
hello, hello, most powerful women in network marketing and a few courageous men in the house. Celebration. You guys have a seat, have a seat. Hello, I'm so excited to be with you. I'm so excited to just really spend this time together to harness our superpowers, to acknowledge our imperfections, to make them perfectly a part of the equation. I'm excited to be with you. I have a tendency to travel the world really fast. I like woke up the other morning in the Bahamas. I ran over to Saskatchewan, Canada, right? Made my way back to Florida, then went over to LA, then came here. And so to be here with you for all three days, I'm super excited. So I hope you came empty because I came full and I wanna pour all that I have into you. I wanna make sure that you are fed. And then we're gonna start a relationship here. For me, I love to start a relationship and I love I love long-term relationships. I mean, I love, instead of going wide, go deep, and then go deep and wide. And so I am going to make bold invitations to you to take radical action in your lives in ways that you may not have thought I was gonna do and invite you to be radical and say yes. That's what I do. I'm not a motivational speaker, I'm a disruptor. Yes! I'm a disruptor, disruptor of all things mediocre. Yes! Like, that's what I came for. Now, I didn't come to entertain you though I am quite entertaining. I came for your transformation. That's what I'm about. And so we're gonna take a journey and we're gonna do a lot of great things because I, I want to, and, and for the game changers and gladiators, and that's my focus, I focus on game changers and gladiators and leaders. I, fo I focus on people who are meant to lead and they need more tools to lead or more courage, or more confidence, or more skill set, whatever that is. Um, I'm in a place in my life where I want to serve leaders because when I serve leaders, they lead more. So if I touched a thousand leaders who are all touching a thousand people, then my work multiplies while I'm sitting on the beach in the Bahamas because I was responsible on who I spent my time with. And I want to do that. So I'm excited. Now, the reason why I'm here is because success is your birthright. Yes. Success is your birthright. And it's real important is for you to understand that opportunity does not keep score. Opportunity is available for all of us. Now we all come from different origins, different beginnings, different families. I didn't say it was as easy for everyone as it is for some. I didn't say that. But I did say opportunity is available to all of us. It's our birthright. But Lisa, it's our birthright. But you don't know my story, it's our birthright. But you don't understand my family, they're crazy, it's our birthright. Now, it doesn't mean that it won't be challenging, but my birthright is always my birthright. And so if you focus on your birthright and the fact that opportunity is available. You may have to take a different path than others. People are always blown away at who I've become. I say, I'm blown away at who I've become. But I kept saying, it's my birthright. It's my birthright. No, I don't have all the answers, but it's my birthright. We recognize that without a sense of urgency, desire loses its value. Like you have to go after your birthright with a sense of urgency. That whole, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I don't have, no. Today, what a, th this is a great day to be amazing. This is a great day to play full out. And so I, I came to stir your soul. You know I'm gonna do that. I came to disrupt any form of mediocrity in you. I came to challenge any reason you might have to shrink. I came to dissolve and help you to dissolve all old stories that you've long since outgrown. Hello, hello, who am I talking to? Raise one hand, raise two hands. If you know you've outgrown some stories, I see your hand up. I see your hand up, Elise. I see your hand up. I see your hand up, Brenda, Gary. I see your hand up, Akisha. I see your hand up, first, second, third row, back corner. I see your hand up. And sometimes you need someone to be your advocate so that you can get out of your own way, but you also can see your own greatness. 
So many times I had to borrow someone else's lenses and look at myself through their lenses because their lenses were better than mine. When you recognize that this is the season for you to show up, this is the season for you to shine. This is the season for you to be unapologetic. That's not the option, that's the must. Hello, that's the must, say must. I'm reading your lips online, say must. It's not the option, it's the must because after going through 2020, hope, hope is medicine. Evidence is medicine. You are the hope and you are the medicine. And so while it may have seemed optional in 2019, things got real serious by 2021. That's why you're in this seat. That's why you're in that seat. That's why you're in this conference. Because you came to find out what's the thing that I need to know and the thing I need to do to become the woman, the man I've always known myself to be. That's why you're here. You're here because there's an opportunity. And you got to ask yourself, how much more time, how much more time will I wait before I act as if it's non-negotiable? Like non-negotiable. And let me tell you, non-negotiable is when you take every other option and you slide it off the table. Now, a lot of us are spending life like it's optional. We're going after that dream like it's optional. Let me show you what that looks like. When it gets too hard, we slow down. Is that my earring that I hear? Because I'm not going to mess up the audio. I'm all about the audio. Did y'all see the earrings already? All right. As long as you saw the earrings already. As long as you saw them, then I can lose them. Here you go, baby. Hold on to that. They clapping for them. Okay, audio. I told you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm known for my earrings. I'm going to keep it like that, too. So understanding that there's a dis distinction between optional and non-negotiable. Optional is, oh my God, I can't seem to get people to return my phone calls, so I'm gonna stop making as many calls. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, oh, hold on, let me set it up. Whenever you hear your truth from me, raise one hand or two hands or two hands and wave. Whenever, I see you, Carla, up there. I see you. I see you, Nikisha. I see you. I see you, Maya. Whenever you hear your truth, I see you, Susie. Whenever you hear your truth, I want you to just wave. And you're not necessarily outing yourself from me. You're reminding yourself that you're listening. You're reminding yourself this applies to me. You have to tell your sales when they hear your truth. You have to tell your sales. Remind yourself that's my truth. Good, bad, right, wrong, happy or sad, whatever. It's all just taking inventory of where I am today. And the good news is wherever you are today, you're on your way to your next. That's the good news. And if this is your starting place, you're doing good. If this is your starting place, you're going to be all right. So when we look at non-negotiable, non-negotiable says that I will not wait for it to be convenient. I will not wait for it to be popular nor will I wait for it to be approved. Hello by everybody. Hello, one hand up, two hands up. If you know that it's time to take on that commitment. I, and off, so often we wait, can they handle me? Is it okay for me to truly shine? Come on, you guys, who's done that? Can they, can they see me? Can, can, are, are they okay with who I'm becoming? Uh, let me, let me take, check the temperature in the room and see if they can really handle the woman I'm becoming, the man I'm becoming, right? And then you dial it down because you don't want to offend anybody. Well, if, if shining my light is offensive, I apologize in advance. And being okay with that, and not in a disrespectful way that doesn't honor anyone, but in the most honoring way of self. Because... At the end of the day, recognizing that your birthright has not changed. Your birthright to have joy. Your birthright to have happiness. Your birthright to have abundance. That hasn't changed. Life came at you, life happened, but your birthright didn't change. We start changing what we expect. But your birthright says you deserve wealth. You deserve success. You deserve peace of mind. That's your birthright. That's not extra. That's not bonus. That's your birthright. Because you were born, you deserve time freedom. That's your birthright. 
And I'm all about chasing my birthright. Because it's my birthright. It's your birthright. Financial freedom, epic lifestyle, that's your birthright. If you can relate to what I'm saying, raise one hand. If you say there's something on that list that I stopped giving myself, I stopped acting like it was my birthright. And so I just came. I came to remind you. I came to remind you that your next level of greatness on every level, your next level of success on every level, your next level of wealth on every level and happiness will come, here's the key, on the other side. Say other side. Other side. Say other side. other side. It's not on this side. It's not on this side. No matter how cute you are, how long you've been successful, you, you're super, I was so impressed with my bio. Do you know your bio has already been done? <laughs> your bio has already been done. And people like write on their bio, read my bio. Whatever. I want to know your future. Oh, right. I want to know who are you becoming? That's been done. That's so 08. Right. <laughs> so on the other side of a bold decision, I'm going to, I'm going to constantly put bold invitations in front of you. Constantly. That's my job. That's my opportunity. I'm going to put a bold invitation. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you a bold invitation. And then your job is to make a bold decision. Bold yes or a bold no. And then your job is to be in bold action. Not like easy action. Like I just, I'm kind of, I just kind of want to shine a little bit. I don't want to offend you. Bold action. Bold, decisive, clear action where you're designing the woman you will be remembered as. I'm writing my legacy right now. I'm writing the story that's going to be told about my life when I sit down and do no more. I can't stop writing that story because if I don't write that story, if you don't write that story, someone else is going to write your story for you. So I just stop by to disrupt your soul. Any form of mediocrity, I'm going to come for it. And if you're ready, if you're ready, if you're ready, yes, I am. If you're ready, yes, I am. If you're ready, yes, I am. If you're ready, then we're going to do a whole lot of goodness together. And what I love about the journey we get to take is the room fits all your imperfection in it. Like bring all your imperfection in because when you show who you can be inside of your imperfection, you inspire all of us other imperfect people. Because there's a whole lot of energy wasted trying to be perfect. Why, there's a lot of energy. You're distracted from your calling, trying to make sure the image of us is right. When I look at my life and how unrecognizable my life is and who, who I've been to become this person, when I look at her, and I look at her journey, and I look at when I gave myself permission to leap, and when you give yourself permission to leap, even when you're scared, and you give yourself permission to leap, leap even inside of being unsure, and you give yourself permission to leap even when you feel alone, don't wait for it all to be right. Make it amazing with all you have. And then when you're willing to give yourself permission a thousand times, a thousand second chances that you stop keeping score of why it won't work and you just keep track of what you can do better next time. You just give yourself permission and you hold on to your birthright. That the fact that I'm functionally dyslexic doesn't change my birthright. The fact that I was on government's assistance didn't change my birthright. The fact that I was on women, infant and children, free cheese, free butter, free pasta. Anybody know what that program was? I was embarrassed for the program and grateful at the same time. Even though I had to stand in line every Thanksgiving for three years and get that box of free turkey, that box of stuffing, a couple of potatoes for my son, even though I stood in that line embarrassed, I was equally grateful that the line existed. Does it change my birthright? 
being obese for 19 years when the secret when many of you met me I was 224 pounds being honored on the highest form of media of my life on Oprah, 224 pounds, dealing with the shame of having to go on Oprah while being obese. I'm still going to Oprah. <laughs> I'm still going to go. I'm just going to wear my big outfit. Like, there's no waiting for it to be right. There's no waiting for it to be right. Even though I would get off stage and literally be driven directly to urgent care to have one of the six blood transfusions in three years that I had navigating through my health hell so I can make it to this stage so I can serve you don't wait don't wait for all things to be perfect I don't know that date I've never seen that date on the calendar all things are right now become non-negotiable and don't be worried about the thing that's around the corner that might get you when you become non-negotiable and unapologetic you tell that thing around the corner I'm coming for you I just stop by. I just stop by to shake up any form of mediocrity in you, to shake up any form of complacency in you, to shake up any form of I've arrived in you, or I want to slow down, or I'm tired, or I'm frustrated, as if that's all not supposed to be a part of the equation of being amazing, of being a major contributor to the planet, as if Mahatma Gandhi wasn't frustrated, as if Mother Teresa didn't have someday as if Nelson Mandela didn't get exhausted or Dr. Martin Luther King didn't worry or wonder Whew. when you have all those feelings you're in the right place at the right time with the right people and this is all just the opening session <laughs> you cannot imagine who you can become and what your life can look like <laughs> when you begin to tell the world your unique story. And when you are willing to let the world see all of your colors unapologetically, this is all of me. I come with my beautiful brilliance and my mess. I come with my greatness and my dysfunction. I come with all of my possibility and my baggage because you'll realize that someone's waiting to hear your story. Someone needs your story exactly the way you would tell it. They don't need my story from you. They need your story from you. Your job is to learn how to tell your story in such a way that they can digest it and be inspired from it. Because your story, once you've lived it, your story is no longer about you. <laughs> I don't want to tell my story. It hurts me. It ain't about you. Your story is about all the people that will be inspired because you have the courage to do the work to tell the story. And you will be blown away of all the people all the places that want to hear your little dysfunctional story. You'll be blown away. There's no way I saw it coming. There's no way you could have told me that this little girl from South Central LA, living between the Harlem Crip 30s and the rolling 60s, having three fights a week to get home from school, functionally dyslexic. When I got a C in school, my family celebrated me because a C was hard to get when my brain flipped all the words, you couldn't tell me. I didn't know that CNN and Extra and Larry King would wanna hear the story. I didn't know that Steve Harvey and Google and Amazon would wanna hear the story. I didn't know that NBC, I didn't know that Fox would wanna hear the story several times. I didn't know and neither do you. Your job is not to screen how important the story is. Your story, your job is to tell it to anyone listening, to sing it from the mountaintops. And you'll be blown away. So let's master the story. Let's master the story. Because it's your story. And if you don't tell your story, your story will never be told. I'm so excited. I'm excited at what we get to do together. To realize that sometimes 
you got to connect your head and your heart so they can speak the same language. Raise your hand if you know my head and my heart sometimes don't speak the same language. What's coming out of my head, I'm, I'm in my head, but my heart's trying to scream. And the longest journey from, in my body is from my heart to my head or from my heart throughout my mouth. Well, I came here. And I'm going to show you a little bit. I'm going I'm to give you some things you can take away over the next three days. Is that all right with you guys? Yeah. I'm going to give you a takeaway. I'm going to give you something you can do. But I'm just going to give you a little bit because I'd rather give you something you can apply now than give you so much that you don't know how to apply it. And then I'm going to send the invitation for you to get more and go deeper with me. We can get there. We can absolutely get there. Because the ultimate question is, who's waiting on you to show up? Somebody's waiting on you. I was waiting on someone to tell me that it's okay for you to be exactly like you are. And your job is to go get them. Your job is to become a magnet to attract them. Your job. Because when you share your story, your story will help them shine. <laughs> so who's waiting? Now, I want you to go in shares now. So here's, I, I'm a trainer. So most people call me a motivational speaker. I forgive you. I'm a trainer. I'm a coach. I love coaching and watching you and your greatness. So I want to take you in breakout rooms now. And what I love about this training is that everyone that's with us, you're going to do work each day. You're going to, you're going to try your own muscles on inside this conversation. And then we're going to move to the next piece and I'm going to teach you something else and you're going to try those muscles on, right? And you're going to feel movement before you leave here. You don't have to wait six months or eight months before you feel the progress. We're going to feel progress before we leave. Is that all right? Yes, yes. So before I do that, I want to say farewell to our live stream audience online. I love you so much. Remember to click the link and register and you can join us. All weekend, all you got to do is register, sign in, pay the 97 bucks. It's far worth it. You've already got that value. And then join us. If you know you want your breakthrough, then don't be cut off at this point. Stay with us. So click the link and join us, and we'll be here all weekend long to serve you. So farewell to everyone else. Take care, take care, take care. And uh, for those of you who are here, I want you.